Empress Aliara, also known as the Countess Desire, is a male gin in Karna for the Urgeworm Carnella. I'm going to tell you what a male gin in Karna is, who Carnella is, and why the Countess is so hard to kill. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, welcome to the Maple Table, my name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss lore around some of your favorite role-playing games such as Starfinder, Werewolf the Apocalypse. If that's something you're interested in, I would love to have you join me at the table, and you can do that by hitting that subscribe button and that bell notification. Empress Aliara is rumored to have been a very popular courtesan. This would have been during the time of Caliph Harun al-Rashid's reign, and this was in the area that is now known as Iran, and this happened sometime in the neighborhood of September 786. What made Aliara so special was the fact that she was able to tap into her customers' wants, desires, and just really get into their heads. She lures her victims by telling them exactly what they want to hear. She promises them everything they desire, and she delivers death. What makes her more dangerous than most of the male Jin Karna is the fact that not only is she just as powerful as them, but she doesn't need to rely on her brute strength. She appears as the object of your desire, whether that be somewhere in the neighborhood of the horizontal limbo, or whether that be the mother figure that you were looking for, or a child that you were maybe desiring to have for yourself. Whoever is looking at her, she appears as the object of their desire to, who, to whoever's looking at her. Now, Aliara, she views people as things. They are objects for her to use and dispose of. They serve short-term purposes. They are nothing but tools to her. Anyone ensnared by her siren's song is used to further her own dark purposes, her own dark goals, as well as those of Carnella. With the worm trapped by the weaver's web, it was yearning for release. It desired to be released. You can probably see where this is going. It wanted to be free more than anything else. And that desire, that object of wanting to be free, birthed an urge worm of desire. The longer the worm was bound and is still bound to this day, the urge worm of desire grew. And like all the other urge worms, it was able to free itself. And now with the urge worm out into the wild, so to speak, it represents the state of desire or desiring. Never being fully satisfied, which actually makes it kind of sad. Wanting something is not in and of itself a terrible act. In the context of Werewolf the Apocalypse, Gaia actually created desire. It was intended to form deep, meaningful connection, strong foundations for relationship. And when anything comes to the worm, it takes it, it twists it, and turns it into something not designed for its intended purpose. Now, Empress Ilaria wasn't always the Empress. As we covered previously, she was just a regular person. She was a courtesan. But through her connection to the urge worm, she was able to turn herself into a very powerful bane. One that has been around for a long time, a long time. You're looking at, uh, you're looking at almost 1200 years. Now there actually is a common type of Fomori when you're dealing with Empress Alaria and Carnella, the urge worm. They are called enticers. Now it should come as no surprise to anyone that Pentex is helping the urge worm of desire along. Siren Cosmetics is a division of Pentex and they create a makeup called Entice. It's a little on the nose, but that's what they made. They also help create Enticer Fomori using this product. Now this makeup line is targeted for high net worth individuals because it's very expensive. And the reason it's expensive is because it's very expensive to produce the drugs that go into the cosmetic line. And it's addictive. So once you get started, you're usually going for about two weeks before you've developed a full fledged habit. Now, in the process of becoming an enticer, there is actually four stages that one has to go through. Each stage takes about a week, except for the last one. But we'll get to that in a minute. Stage one, 
the user is going to experience intense euphoria. They are feeling so good. They're looking good. They're literally looking better. And they are a little bit more active between the sheets, if you know what I mean. Phase two. The honeymoon effects have worn off at least a little bit. And someone who is just starting to see reason, they can at this point try to break the habit of using these cosmetics and the, the drug addiction that comes with it. It's not an easy thing to do, but it is possible. If you don't, the user of the cosmetic line will start to experience some physical changes now. Their skin will develop some glands and it will excrete a very powerful pheromone. They will also be surrounded by a aura almost. It's more of a spiritual thing than it is actually seen with the eyes. It does protect them from the delirium, but it also makes them more attractive. This leads us into phase three. This is when an enticer is probably the most dangerous because now they've developed all of the powers that an enticer bane would have. They just haven't developed any of the control that comes with it. If you're looking to use the enticers, you will probably come across them at this point because they will be reckless, loud, not unlike the guru, but this is when they would be most noticeable. The enticer in this stage will experience significant mood swings, very high highs and very deep lows. Their mental state will be something akin to someone on an LSD trip, so they will largely not be talking sense. And to further compound the problem, they can actually make others have hallucinations with them. This is also the last time that you can get rid of the bane that is transforming the person who is affected by this. And if it's working, in order to protect its host and keep the process going, the bane will actually change how the user is perceived. Instead of making them the object of desire, they will make them unappealing and revolted and hated so that they'll want to go back to the drugs and to the, the makeup and keep the process going. And if you don't get rid of this bane, the subject or the user will have a final transformation. They will gain sharp pointed teeth and they will be able to transform from their human forms into their enticer forms at will. They won't need the makeup to do this anymore, but because they're addicted to it, they will still probably seek it out. The last stage, phase four. This is permanent now. This is your way of life. You are an enticer. Enticers can take on any form they wish and they can actually take on multiple forms to multiple people at the same time. And in order to find the perfect form, they are able to pull images directly from your head and then just look like that. Pentex really likes to use enticers to lure whoever they want into traps, and then they convert those people to the worm. Typically, if you see an enticer working with Pentex, they are very well treated, they are well paid, well taken care of, Pentex really likes the enticers. Now there is a way to actually end the life of this male Jin and Karna. It's just really, it's really difficult. Many have tried, many have failed and became play toys for the Empress. Destroying her would deal a massive blow to the worm and to Carnella. In order to do this or how one would go about doing this, one has to first resist the siren call of the Empress. They would also then need to act like they were under the influence of the Empress. They would then have to steal one of her weapons, her weapons, not just a weapon, it has to be one of her weapons, and then they have to kill her with it. And at the same time, this has to be done in the process of swearing fealty to Alaria, which in turn taints you with the worm. So if you fail, you're a worm-tainted minion now, deal with that. Alaria has a coterie of assassins who have failed in their attempt to kill her using this method, and she likes to put them on display so that others know that while it is possible, it is, it, it's impossible. But who knows? Maybe you will succeed where the rest have failed. So what are my final thoughts on the Countess of Desire? I think the Countess would make a great reoccurring bad guy or bad villain, I suppose, for your games. Not something that you would encounter firsthand, but something to lead up to, build up to, 
and eventually just have the overarching theme of them going through different layers of Pentex, going through different spiritual encounters, making the Countess of Desire the first person that you run into or fight, not necessarily a great idea, but definitely layering the minions in, layering the urge worms in to any story that you want to tell, it does give you quite a few options to involve different areas of Pentex, different Banes, different umbral explorations that you can do. This is a fantastic villain to have for your campaign. Speaking of objects of desire, my patrons, Autumn Alchemist, Orbs McMellons, RRSPQ, Ducky, Vox, Caneroot, Warpony, Get of Math Rocks, BA Bravo, Arutvin, The First Layer, Bones Malone, Westheimer, and Ain't No Waifu. Thank you all so much for the support for the channel. If you would like to learn more about the worm and its minions, I have a playlist on the screen for you now. My name's Nathaniel. This has been The Maple Table. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.